In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the exact methods that I used to drop one single mark over the six exams of my math setup. Yeah, you heard that right. That's 599 out of 600 marks. And these methods haven't just been used by me. I have taught them to hundreds of students to get them A's and A stars in their maths A level as well. Now, we've not got long here in this video, so I'll be giving you two of my biggest tips that will impact your revision and ultimately your grade the most. Now, back in the day, and by that time, I mean any time before 2017, A level maths was formed by six exams four pure and two applied. Everyone had to do the four pure ones, see one, two, three, and four, and then you could choose two applied ones. In my case, I did M1 and M2, which were the mechanics modules. Yeah, that meant that you could do your whole A-level in maths without doing any stats. Ah, the good old days. So, here's what I got in these exams. C1, 100. C2, 100. C3, 100. C4, 100, M2, 100, and M1, 99. Yeah, it haunts me to this day. But we move on. Since getting those marks, I've been very interested in dissecting what it is that I did to get those into actionable tips to help others to do the same. So, without further ado, I bring you the first tip, which is exam questions when you finish a topic. Now, what usually happens when people do A-level maths is the following. They start learning, maybe they're doing algebra. All of this content's coming in, right? New stuff, you've got these quadratics here, polynomials, simultaneous equations, graph transformations, it's all popping off, a bit of surds on the side. All of this content's coming in, there's probably bits you don't understand, you're going really quick, and then bam, you're on to the next topic. You might have finished the topic with a few gaps in your knowledge, but everything's going so fast and coordinate geometry's already started again, so you go on to the next topic and you kind of forget about it. But this keeps happening. These gaps in your knowledge keep snowballing. So, you eventually get through all of the content, you realise that you've basically forgotten everything, or worse even, you never really had it down in the first place. You essentially see in all these proper exam questions of each topic all at once for the first time, and it's way too much. What we should instead be doing is we finish a topic and then before moving on to the next one, we need to make sure that we actually know how to answer questions on it. This way, there'll be no mistakes when we actually come to the exam because we've seen all of these proper exam questions before and in the long run, it's actually gonna save you time because trust me, when you start falling behind in A-level maths, there is a very big effort to bring it back. Okay, so you're saying, Paddy, well, that's just such a simple and obvious tip, right? But trust me, you will be very surprised at how small the minority of students that actually do this is. And the reason is simple. It's a fast-paced course. You know, it's very easy to have the intentions of doing this at the start of year 12 when you've not got any work on, but then as the year goes through, everything's popping off You've got your uni applications, people going on about work experience, all your three or four subjects on the go, trying to sort your fake ID because you're not 18 yet and you want to go Greenfields. It adds up. So this is a lot easier for students with a tutor, for example. So I have some one-on-one -on -one students and I can make sure that all of them are doing this. And better even, I can actually manage it for them, moving them on to the next topic when I know they're ready. But this does not, however, mean that you need a tutor to get this right. On AI Tutor, for example, we make this as easy as it can possibly be. And in fact, we go one step further. We give you the ability to practice subtopics with real exam questions right after learning them. Let's show you how. Here we have a topics page on AI Tutor. We can see the different subtopics that form that topic, which in the case of algebra are indices, thirds, quadratics, etc., etc. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and learn about certs. Now, the video lessons themselves have exam questions in them to make sure I'm on track while learning, but let's say I've finished the lessons. I've officially learned about certs. Do not move on. It's now time to test yourself. Not next week, not after you finish the course, 
but now. You're gonna see a gorgeous little button over here that says practice. What this is gonna do is feed you proper exam questions on the stuff you have just been learning. But not only that, these exam questions are going to adapt themselves to how you're doing in that topic. If you look at the progress bar, we'll see it's empty. So I'm currently being given basic questions. As I get these questions right, the progress bar will increase and I'll be given gradually harder questions until it fills up. Get them wrong, the bar's going down. Think of this like a game, the time will pass quicker. Now, you can decide exactly at which point you want to move on. Now, if you're a psycho like me, you'll want to get it to 100. Or you might say, you know what? These super top end questions are a bit too tough for me. I'm happy moving on at 80. But either way, we make sure we do this before moving on. Going like this through topics might seem like it's taken a little longer at first, but it will develop a much deeper understanding of the topics and I can guarantee you that it will save you time and effort in the long run. So that's the first tip. And that was more related to the initial learning side. The next one is gonna be related to your revision. I'm gonna call this one the past paper power grid. That's not a phrase I've ever used. I just thought the alliteration would sound good. So, past papers. Every single video on getting good grades on YouTube goes on about past papers. And they're right, you need to do it. But you've already heard all that before. So I wanna give you something more. The thing is, you need a system in place to make sure that you're tracking your progress on these papers and improving. You also need to keep a note of every question that you initially got wrong or even drop marks on so you can make sure it doesn't happen again. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna list the different papers you're gonna have to do for your course. So let's say you're doing Edexcel, A-level, maths. You'll have paper one and paper two, which are pure, and then paper three, which is stats and mechanics. For the rows, we're gonna list all of the different sets of papers that exist. So in this example, we might have specimen paper, sample paper, June 2018, June 2019, etc. And then simply, as we go doing papers, we're going to write down what mark we got and which questions caused us difficulty. You're then going to go to the AI Tutor YouTube channel, find the paper that you did, and then find a video of me telling you how to do the questions that you got wrong. Okay, so you're then going to go through all of the papers over the course of your revision, repeating this process. And once you've done that, you're gonna go back and revisit all of the questions that you initially got wrong and try them again. Got them right? Sick. It's stuck in your head. You've made progress. You're prepared for that type of question in the exam. Got it wrong again? That's also brilliant. We can now see that this is a weak point and this is something that we need to focus on. Go ahead and work on that topic. Now, you're gonna repeat this process until you have cleared that grid of questions making sure that you know how to do every single question that has ever been asked in an exam. Now, one thing to consider is the timing of this grid. If you're just not ready to hit past papers, right? You make the grid, you start smashing them out, you get in 10% in each paper, right? And you're just filling the grid with, oh, I had trouble with question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's kind of gonna lose its effectiveness. What I'd suggest is just doing a paper at first and seeing how you do. You'll quickly be able to tell if it's time to start hitting the papers or if you need to take a step back and actually focus on learning the content a bit more. But hopefully, if you followed the first tip when you were doing your learning, you will be at that stage where you're prepared. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that when I was doing my A-levels, I wasn't going for an A-star. I was going for full marks. So I needed to make sure that I could do everything. But you might have a different goal. So maybe if you're going for a C or a B or an A in some cases, you won't want to worry yourself with that freak hard question on the 2019 paper, for example. You should instead focus more on the basics, making sure that you can answer the questions that are coming up consistently correctly. If, however, you want an A star, I personally think it would be irresponsible to go into that exam without having mastered all of the questions on the past papers. There's one more point to make. When I was doing my A-level, it was old spec. So there were a bucket load of past papers. This meant that I could make this grid massive and really use it to hammer in every single question. What you're gonna find doing new spec is that you're gonna run out of past papers quite quickly. After all, it only started in 2017. Now, while I still want you to make this grid 
for the papers that you do have available to you. Here's how you can take advantage of AI Tutor to solve this problem. So I'm currently on the exam page on AI Tutor. The first thing you're gonna see is the papers that you need to take for your specific exam board. So in this case, paper one, two, and three. Now, you can click start on any one of these, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna generate an exam to the specifications of that paper and it's gonna be unique to you. That means it's gonna take into account the questions that you've already seen before and how you're doing in each topic, but it's always gonna stay within the specifications and constraints of the exam. Once you complete the paper, you're gonna get it automatically marked along with detailed analytics on timing and topic performance. You'll also have the work solutions to each question right there at your fingertips. Well, that's not all there is on this page. And this is where that kind of past paper power grid comes in. Every exam you'll ever do on AI Tutor will be recorded. You'll see a general progress over time on this graph here. So that'll give you a quick way of seeing if you're going in the right direction. You'll also be able to dive straight back into any one of those papers, see the analysis of how you did, retry the questions, and see the solutions. So everything you'll need for your revision will be right here. So they're the tips. They're simple on the surface, but doing them right can have a humongous impact on your grade. If you have any questions on this or tips of your own that you think might be better than mine, let me know in the comments and I will get back to you. If you like the look of some of the features of AI Tutor that I showed you in this video, you will love what else it has to offer. So as a bonus to anyone who's made it this far, I will give you 20% off any premium package. On top of that, we have an AO and A star guarantee where if you do not get an AOA star in the real thing, we will refund your entire subscription. Just use the code YouTube20 at checkout to claim that discount and get the top grade. I'm Paddy, I've got a class to teach. See you later.